in the previous two parts of this video on uh, a buck converter controller design example um, we looked at uh, we actually designed the uh, feedback controller for an output voltage control using the uh, type 2 k factor method and uh, we also uh, verified the controller design in the frequency domain through uh, uh, various uh, transfer functions like the uh, loop gain the closed loop closed loop gain and a uh, few of the uh, uh, disturbance uh, transfer functions, the output impedance and the uh, uh, input disturbance uh, transfer function. In this video, we will go ahead and uh, implement the design controller in uh, both the switching model as well as the average model and uh, perform several time domain transient simulations. So here is the switch model and all the component values uh, as well as the input load values and the controller parameters they correspond to the uh, example specifications and the controller that we designed in the previous uh, parts similarly the average model also has the same component values and identical controller um, the uh, the various transitions that we are going to study uh, in time domain are a step change in the load current implemented by this uh, uh, load switched in at a given time um, and then we have also a step change in the input reference in the command input uh, and uh, so that happens at 3 milliseconds and going from 12 volts nominal output to 15 volts um, output as a step and I also apply a step in the uh, in the input voltage applied at 8 milliseconds uh, going from uh, a nominal input voltage uh, initially 25 volts and then that is stepped up to 25% um, above the original value so it's uh, um, uh, a quarter of VIN is added to the original VIN now also notice that uh, for the average model uh, I do its own um, comparison of the average output with the reference the reference is the same for both the switch model and the average model um, and the error between this reference and the individual output voltages from the two models they are fed to their individual controller and uh, for the average model the output is the VCA which is directly given as the uh, the turns ratio of this ideal transformer implementation and for the switch model the output of the controller goes to the speed doubling block to generate the switching pulses for the um, the MOSFET so let's go ahead and do a time domain uh, simulation um, simulation parameters I'm running for 10 milliseconds and uh, the initialization has uh, all the uh, parameters power stage as well as the controllers defined and these are the values that um, we obtained from MathCAD in the previous uh, uh, video okay. so I'm going to in the first scope I have uh, the output voltage from the switching and the average model uh, as well as the uh, uh, the inductor current um, uh, in again switching model and the average model so look at the scope uh, Okay, so this is the startup transient. Um, uh, as we know, the um, initial condition was given as a zero voltage, so there is a fairly long time because of the large capacitor that we have, uh, and the uh, and also the uh, it also depends on the control parameters. It takes uh, um, it looks like it's point zero five ten to the uh, minus two, so that is. Uh, 0.5 milliseconds okay. and then this is the time when uh, there is a step change in the uh, in the reference go from 12 volts to 15 volts um, output voltage reference and the actual output voltage uh, follows that uh, um, um, exactly so if you look at the uh, for example the voltage plot there are really two waveforms the uh, uh, one from the switching model the other from the average model and you can see there is a good correlation between the the two the two the two models 
uh, zoom in further. Uh, okay. So this is uh, this instant is when a step load uh, is added. The load resistance is switched in. The extra load resistance is switched in into the circuit at this point. So the output voltage dips and the controller takes corrective action to bring it back to the um, required 15 volts output. And this is when that extra load is removed. So there is uh, less output current than the inductor current. Output voltage has an overshoot you know, and the controller uh, eventually corrects it back to, to 15 volts. And the last transient here at 8 milliseconds is the uh, input voltage transient. The input voltage goes from uh, 25 volts to um, 25 times 1.25, 25% increase in the uh, input voltage. And, uh, and this is the corresponding transient uh, uh, performance uh, with the design controller. And if you look at the input, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the inductor current waveform, let's look at the complete simulation. So there is a, a very large current uh, during the startup. Uh, so that is required to, if you want, uh, like this kind of uh, a startup transient uh, reasonably fast, like it was, uh, I think it was 0.5 millisecond. Uh, to charge up a final microfarad requires this uh, fairly large current. Okay. Uh, now, if this, um, for example, if you had designed the uh, current rating of the switches uh, very close to the maximum load current value, which I think was about 5 amperes, uh, then this large overshoot may not be acceptable. Uh, in that case, we have to use what is known as a soft start, where we would uh, raise the output voltage, uh, actually the output voltage reference, uh, very slowly, maybe with uh, as a ramp with a um, uh, rise time of uh, a few milliseconds. Okay. Or we could uh, clamp the duty ratio initially uh, uh, and it will result in uh, comparable results. Okay. Uh, then uh, looking at the transients, um, this is the transient when the output voltage needs to go from 12 to 15 volts, uh, as seen from here. And that can also be again uh, achieved by having a larger inductive current than the load current till the output voltage reaches the new steady state. Um, and uh, in this steady state also the inductive current is larger than before. That is because um, the load current is uh, is higher uh, because we maintain the load resistance the same and with increased output voltage the load current is higher. So this is the uh, um, step increase in the load applied at this instant. Uh, so the uh, uh, inductive current also needs to be higher and when the load is removed the inductive current goes back to the original value. This is the input current transient, input voltage transient sorry and uh, um, both before and after the transient the uh, inductive current is the same. It does not need to change because the output load current has not changed. Only during the uh, transients the inductive current um, has uh, some overshoot. Next, uh, we will look at the control voltages in uh, sco in the second scope. Uh, it, this one really has um, uh, two signals. So, if you really zoom in here, you can see there are there's a green and a red waveform corresponding to the switching and the average models. So, initially, the uh, control voltage actually saturates the duty ratio actually saturates at one. Uh, that's because of the relatively high bandwidth that we have and the large output capacitance, final microfarad requires fairly large inductive current and to get that inductive current of uh, um, that's um, that slow rate the the slope of the inductive current we need a larger average input voltage and therefore uh, a large duty ratio and the maximum we can have is uh, is one so it's clamped at one and after this time the um, the current is risen and the requirement on the duty ratio comes down and then we are in the linear unsaturated uh, region uh, also notice the good correlation between the average and the switch model. Uh, this is the uh, step change in the command reference, uh, the step load addition, step load removal, and this is the um, the last one was the uh, input voltage step change. As the input voltage rises, the required duty ratio for the same output voltage comes down, and that is what uh, we see here. Uh, I'm also plotting the input current. Um, obviously, the the switching 
Uh, the green waveform is from the switch model and the red is from the average model. Uh, and uh, the red waveform is actually um, um, is similar to the cycle by cycle average value of, uh, of the green uh, waveform. Uh, one of the uh, objectives in doing the time limit simulation is to actually verify that the uh, uh, the control design uh, works correctly with uh, you know, at least a stable performance under the extreme operating conditions. So the controller itself was designed for a for an uh, for a given nominal operating conditions, and um, the my first test of in the time domain corresponded to that nominal condition B in of 25 volts and a load current of 3 amperes. So the I will show the simulations for two extreme conditions. One would be the um, the lowest voltage and the highest current, highest load current, and the other extreme is the highest input voltage and lowest uh, load current. Okay. Uh, and we're going to compare each uh, each of those three um, operating conditions. Uh, so let me run this um, simulation under the nominal conditions uh, once again and save those um, uh, save those values. So it's simulation uh, start in the in this waveform. I would uh, uh, just save this these waveforms and uh, go to the schematic and change the uh, uh, operating conditions. Simulation parameters initialization. I would change the input voltage to the maximum specified voltage was 30 volts, and I would also change the load resistance such that the load current is the minimum specified and I think that was 1 ampere so 12 volts um, divided by 1 that is the um, load resistance 12 volts okay. um, so if I run the uh, simulation and uh, look at the uh, voltages and the currents under all of those uh, transient conditions uh, you can see there is uh, uh, very little change in the output voltage as we want um, the change in the input voltage or the load resistance should not affect the output voltage performance so you can see both the um, 25 volts and the 30 volts um, input voltages um, the corresponding output voltages are almost the same showing that the controller is, uh, is stable and gives um, relatively the same um, or similar performance under both conditions uh, there is quite a bit of change in the inductive current uh, that is mainly because of the, uh, the, the change in the load resistance. Okay. Uh, the startup transient is not significantly affected but the value of the inductive current uh, once it settles down um, the, the higher value, uh, the top waveform corresponds to the, uh, the high load current conditions, the first condition, low one is the second condition and uh, similarly here also the same relations uh, hold good. Okay, then uh, let me uh, save this plot as well and uh, uh, go to the schematic and uh, uh, simulate the other extreme condition. Uh, initialization uh, go change the input voltage to 20 volts the lowest input voltage and the load resistance would correspond to the highest current which is 5 amperes so the resistance will be 12 volts divided by 5 amperes. Um, simulate um, this condition. If you look at the same plot, uh, once again, very little change in the output voltage, uh, but uh, quite a bit of change in the inductive current. Uh, the topmost waveform here corresponds to the uh, highest load condition, 5 ampere condition. Um, Okay, and the last thing that I wanted to demonstrate was the uh, um, the input voltage um, disturbance and its uh, rejection. So to study that, uh, I mentioned that one of the uh, um, requirement would be uh, have a high attenuation for a possible 120 hertz ripple in the input voltage if the input uh, DC is derived from a rectified uh, line frequency AC waveform. So to, to simulate that, I'm going to add 
uh, uh, 120 hertz sine wave to the DC voltage. So the DC voltage is the nominal 25 volts and then adding a 5 volts peak, 5 volts amplitude sine wave at 120 hertz. Uh, so that is put in series with the input uh, DC source. So let's uh, uh, look at the output voltage uh, with this uh, input disturbance and to study this because it is low frequency I need to run the simulation for a long duration and run for 100 milliseconds. Okay. So and also I would uh, disable all the other uh, step changes that I apply. So this will make it uh, 300 milliseconds so it doesn't uh, appear in the 100 millisecond simulation. Uh, similarly this also will make it uh, 500 millisecond delay so it doesn't uh, influence. Okay, so simulation start uh, will take a longer time because of the longer simulation time. Okay, I should have deleted these various uh, Let's run this again. Okay, so the input voltage had uh, 5 volts perturbation, uh, 5 volts amplitude perturbation, whereas uh, in the output voltage it is uh, significantly attenuated. Um, so it is uh, probably a few. Um, if you just look at the red which uh, is the average uh, because the green uh, part of the um, the band is related to the switching frequency ripple so we will get uh, a measure of the 120 hertz component uh, better by looking at the average waveform and uh, each division is uh, 100 milli millivolts 12 to 12.1 12 so I would say roughly about maybe 20 millivolts uh, um, peak to peak uh, 120 hertz component. So that's a significant reduction from the uh, 5 volts amplitude or 10 volts peak to peak that we applied at the input. Now if we did not have a closed loop control, if we ran this at a fixed D in open loop fashion, then the uh, uh, 120 hertz ripple at the output would be uh, almost the same as the input scaled only by the duty ratio, let's say about 0.5 or so. Okay, so we have uh, verified that the uh, uh, the designed uh, controller has a satisfactory performance under all operating conditions.